Hey, what's up guys, it's Mario, and in today's video, I'm gonna go over two trades, uh, a first red setup on Zoom, and the second one is a first green setup on DraftKings. I'm gonna go over technical analysis, as well as uh, the thought process, how I manage my risk, uh, and a little bit of fundamentals um, because you have to kind of when you make when you day trade you have to also think about the bigger picture how institutional investors are trading what are they looking at what are they thinking um, and that's very very important all right guys let's get started so let me share my screen uh, and let's get started all right so um, looking at the daily chart uh, the reason why I was interested in shorting uh, Zoom was because um, it was overextended. Um, and what I used to, to determine when a stock is overextended is actually the Bulger conveyance. Um, not only was it overextended, but also the market was, uh, was weak. If you look at the NASDAQ, there was a huge sell-off yesterday uh, after the gap up. Uh, so that gap up to me felt like it was in some sort of exhaustion that was gonna be sold off. Um, especially since Zoom gapped up and it was already overextended, I felt like yesterday it was gonna sell off. Now, there was some weakness. If you, if you look at the intraday chart, let me go over the intraday chart really quickly. Uh, there was some weakness uh, yesterday, and I did start shorting it yesterday. Uh, I shorted uh, after a pullback up there, a VWAP, and I kind of, uh, I was looking for a, a break below this, this level. It pulled back up. I had to cut my losses. It was a small loss, but I, I cut a scratch. But this, to me, when it did this, was what I call a, a blow off type of top, blow off top, uh, kind of gave me a signal that tomorrow was gonna be a first red day. So what I did today, um, I pretty much was looking for either a strong open and to see how it, it acted around these levels, the, these uh, S1 pivot levels, there's this S2. I wanted to see how it reacted around these levels. Uh, or there was a weak open uh, to see if it broke below uh, the uh, line, which is the the uh, the yesterday's close, uh, and that's what literally technically goes over the it went, goes red when it breaks the yesterday's close. It technically goes red, and that's that is literally the setup for his red day. So what what I did is when I saw um, in the first five minutes at the open, it opened weak and it closed below the the yesterday's close. It literally went red. So at that point, I was interested in going red. Uh, excuse me, I was interested in going in shorting. Uh, so what I did, I pretty much started to short uh, in some sort of what I kind of consider almost like an or ORB opening range type of setup, intraday setup, excuse me, uh, where you kind of like either go long or short uh, when it breaks at that range. So I shorted around this level, uh, 566, and I was looking to actually cover half at this pivot, the first pivot, uh, but I actually miss, missed my, my first exit. Uh, I was actually kind of slow. I was actually looking at um, DraftKings at the same time, uh, and I actually forgot to submit my order. It happens, guys. It's okay. Um, as a trader, you're never perfect. Um, you just got to learn from your mistakes. Uh, but that was initially my, my was supposed to be my first exit, but I couldn't. Again, I missed it. It moved too fast for me. I, I was I was I was kind of busy looking at uh, DraftKings. So then I, I ended up covering here. And I ended up, I know I covered half here and I was hoping that after they kind of tested these, this level right here, it was gonna kind of go back and test uh, the S1 pivot level, but it didn't, it kept uh, grinding up. So I took off the second half. So after that, my thought process was like, you know what? I think there's gonna be a second leg. Uh, I'm gonna wait for consolidation. And I was looking for a break of this, of this, down, of this, uh, of this level. So when it broke out of this, this, this level, this, this, this range, I shorted again, uh, which is around uh, 561.50. And I decided to cover some right uh, at the uh, 560 level, around that level, and the rest on this, this second pivot. So I did two trades. So uh, for me, it's like, it was an overall okay trade. I could have done better. Again, I could have like actually been uh, fast enough or, or <laughs> understood that this move could, this uh, price action can move so fast and actually close half here. And I would have wished to, um, of course, close half here uh, and my stop and then add again here for a bigger move. Now, there was a bigger move, a break of S1 and eventually it hit S2. Uh, that was uh, something that I, I, I could have done a second trade, but then I, at that point I was kind of busy with DraftKings 
Uh, and some, one of the hardest things about being a day trader is uh, managing your, your uh, focus because when you're trading more than one stock, um, it's, 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 you can't, it's hard to multitask because you're looking at two charts, you have money on the line, uh, and you're risking in both of them. And, it, and it's, sometimes it's difficult uh, to, to kind of do that some intensely. That's the reason why having multiple screens is very important. It kind of helps with that, but it's never perfect. It's never perfect, you know? Um, so that was it. You know, I could have done, I could have done, I could have retraded it on this pullback to uh, S1. Okay, so let's go over those options. Now, this is a, um, this is green trade, and then the opposite of green, uh, it was overextended on the downside, and yesterday, uh, we had a, and then it was touching those older bands, so it's definitely uh, oversold. Now, one of the things that were, I was personally uh, concerned about was that today is actually uh, the lockout period expiration date. So what that means is that investors, because uh, DraftKings is actually a IPO. And you guys can see it's no more, it no more than uh, actually it opened in, uh, in April this year. So this stock hasn't traded in the open market in the public markets no more than a year, you know? So because of that, when, uh, when, it, when this uh, company's IPO, uh, usually the nine months to a year, there's a lockout period where insiders, uh, either venture capitalists or other institutional investors who bought in before it went public, uh, are not allowed to sell to the public uh, for a couple months. Uh, but now, uh, once that once that lockout expiration um, happens, now they're able to sell. So that's something that I was uh, um, concerned about because I did go along uh, yesterday um, around the close. Um, on my long-term account. Uh, but the way I saw it was like, you know what, regardless of what happens, there's still going to be a, there's still going to be uh, some sort of bounce. And there was one. Uh, so far it's selling up again. Um, it's hard to know who sell is selling into. It could be institutional investors, insiders uh, from, you know, who were stuck in the lockout period selling into this spike right here. Or it could just be the market. Um, it's hard to know. Uh, so as a day trade, you know, that's the nice thing about being a day trader is like, you don't have to worry about the, the longer side of it. You just focus on the short term. Uh, but as also a long-term investor, I do look at the bigger picture. And for me, it helps me to look at the bigger picture, uh, and kind of like, you know, mix that in lay, layer that up with the intraday, intraday day trade type of picture. And that's how I become a better trader. I usually love to day trade the same type of stocks that I am investing in long term. And to me, that helps me uh, become a better trader. And just to kind of give you an example, I'm actually investing in Zoom in the long term. And yesterday, I actually sold some stock uh, in my long term account on Zoom because I felt that that gap up was going to be sold. And it kind of did sell off, but it did not go red. Uh, and then today was a perfect opportunity uh, after the uh, after the uh, this blow off can blow off top to kind of go over it uh, a day perfect day uh, first red day type of trade. So let's go over the entries in um, DraftKings. So now DraftKings, it's it's kind of like a it's one of those stocks where where uh, it tends to spike and then it pulls back right away. So you kind of have to take profits when you get a chance, especially on on, on um, intraday levels. And that's something that, that I did here because just because, you know, it's, it's really hard to know how far this could go. And again, lock expiration did happen today. So those uh, resistance levels, those uh, either pivot levels or intraday resistance lines uh, could be sold, you know, by institutional. So you kind of just have to, you know, keep that in mind. Um, and this is a perfect example. Uh, when I first entered uh, DraftKings because, um, you know, what I was looking for, you know, I was looking for a, a, a reclaim of the VWAP after this consolidation area. And actually it, it really, it held this 4250 level, which is a very, very important level. And if you guys could see on the yesterday's move, that 4250 level it held right here and it created a spike. So then it actually tested the level again and it held it. 
not only did it he, he uh, held that level during uh, when, when the market was open, but also held it during uh, pre-market. So that's very, very important. Um, and then what I was thinking overall in this, this type of trade, I was thinking that um, after the, B, the VWAP reclaim, when I reclaimed that VWAP, you know, that it was going to spike and it was going to continue to just kind of spike kind of like a short squeeze and uh, hit my target level, which was 44. But it did it, you know, it, it kind of spiked and this level, this 40, 40, 40 held. It was heavy resistance and it sold off. And this is exactly what I'm talking about, guys. Sometimes these levels hold and, you know, some traders trade level to level. And a perfect entry would have been, of course, 42.50 um, and sell off in these levels, you know. Uh, but again, you know, you know, when I saw, uh, of course, when I saw the, the heavy flow, I mean, heavy resistance, I decided to take half at entry and raise my stop. Um, and when it kind of kept, kept trending down, I decided to take even more off and I decided to take all of it off right here. So I literally stopped that right here. But I wanted to be patient because I felt like there was going to be a move coming after all this, after yesterday's moving consolidation. And also, I also kept in mind that yesterday, the big move, this big move, didn't happen into midday around, if you look at the timing, around 11.50, 11.30, 30 a.m. Central Time. So I decided to be patient and I felt, you know what, I'm going to just be more patient. I still believe there's going to be a second move. And, and I'm gonna go in again if I do see the right price action. So I created this line just because these are um, uh, lower highs and these are actually higher highs. So I thought when it broke this range um, that it was gonna squeeze. And not only this range, but also the 4340, this level is very, very important. Um, so if it breaks this, I felt like it was gonna squeeze and, and it actually did. So, but before I actually went full size, I decided to kind of start start a position after this initial break of this range. Um, and I actually sold some, sold half in the first starter because that 4340 again was, was having resistance. And I was looking for a quick break, you know, after this squeeze, but it did it. There was still some heavy resistance. But back in my mind, I was also, you know what, I have the opportunity to add if it actually does break that 40, 40, 40, uh, 4340 level. I'm going to add, you know, I really think this could go. So I had another uh, position to add in case it did, and it did, you know. So the next level that I saw on the chart was this, the midpoint uh, pivot level. I took half, and then I took the rest on that 44 uh, uh, daily uh, important level. And I did actually end up squeezing, squeezing even more into, into yesterday's close. Uh, so again, guys, when it comes to day trading, levels are very important, uh, but also price action, the combination of price action, levels and also the overall picture uh fundamental side of what's going on behind those moves they're also very very important like the lockout expiration date uh that ha happened today on DraftKings, this was very important because big institutions whoever um invested well, whoever was those virtual uh what do you call it um venture capitalists who invested in DraftKings before the ipo uh, those are uh, those guys are cashing in now. Uh, not only those guys, but also employees, employees who got stock before it went public. Those people also have the opportunity to sell and to it's just to sell their their, their stock. So, um, and again, that could create heavier uh, sell. But um, my thought process overall is that because it sold off so much uh, in the daily chart uh, after the 64 level, it sold off. I felt that a bounce, regardless, was due. And that's the reason why I bought in my long-term account. Uh, so right now I am a little bit negative in my long-term account, but in terms of my day trade, I made a pretty good trade. Uh, even though it's a, a loss here, I mitigated my risk here. I did take a small loss, uh, but once I uh, traded on the second move, I not only made up all my loss, but I actually became profitable and went green. Uh, so guys, I hope you guys learned something from this video. Um, please uh, make sure to uh, hit the like button and to help me out. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, don't feel free to ask them in the uh, YouTube comments below, and I'll answer to every single question you guys ask. Yes. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good one. The next one. All right.